Vanity, th- uh, Vanity Fair through Katie Nichol has been a massive plant. Um, oh, it's almost like a Royal Rota, um media publisher. It does everything. It covers everything um, regarding Nut and Todge since the beginning, since even before the beginning. Um, and it's very staged. It's very crafted crafted it's it's well executed like right on the dot when something's been launched for example maybe a a child um narrative or a relocation narrative um it's always there it's a gossip rag you wouldn't think it would be but it is and it's well hidden um and uh it used to be Kelly Nickel that was doing all of the articles but they've got this woman here this is all about the Colombian tour um yes Erin Vanderhoof I've seen her crap um for a long time as well and she's pretty much the protege of Katie Nichol uh so you spot patterns when you read media a lot um and you have followed this story for so long as I have so you scroll down and this is supposedly just trying to convince the world that um the whole reason why um, Nut decided to learn a new Spanish, by the way, that's not Arch- Argentinian Spanish. Um, that is, she's actually literally learnt Spanish for this Colombian tour, tour, which is the saddest thing, and also learnt how to dance. Um, <laughs> it's just incredible, this this stage scenario. It's just so fu- It's so fucking funny. It's just ridiculous. It's comical. Um, yeah, so they're just trying to convince you that it's like, you know, it's a new kind of tour that they're just really engaging with people and, and, you know, really, um, absorbing the culture and the surrounds when, uh, you'd be having to learn all of, all of, all of these dance moves and language. You have to be learning it for six months. Like the, the orchestration it takes for this to happen in the first place is insane so think about that um i'm just going to scroll down because there's points to be made there's um things to be uncovered very very explicitly which is unusual for any media publication to be so explicit about i'm just going to scroll down and find the points um okay so Okay, this is the first point. So I'll read it out. These recent trips were made at the invitation of government officials. But as the British media is quick to point out, of course, they are not official royal tours, which, you know, everyone knows they are. Um, even though there isn't a cut and dry definition of an official tour, which so they're blurring the lines and calling, of course, the... Um, the title of the article, A New Way of Doing a Royal Tour. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Um, it generally refers to the fact that when working royals travel in the public, public purse. Hold on. I didn't really get that until now. So they're actually... Um, the taxpayers are paying for these tours. So they're literally telling you that the the British taxpayer are paying for these royal tours and then trying to hide the fact that they're not royal tours. They're some sort of hybrid, which is absolute crap. They are often representing the head of state at the request of the foreign office. So then that would mean Todge and Nutt have had IPP all along, um, protected um, diplomatic immunity, uh, that they are councils of state and that they're going on diplomatic tours instead of uh, covert diplomatic tours uh, to cover the royal tours that taxpayers are paying for. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so the traditional royal tour is about diplomacy, managing relationships, so they're blurring the lines there. Okay, let's move on. 
Oh, it's just so funny. Oh, this is my favourite. The Sussexes returned to the road in 2024. No one cares. Over the last few years, they have been collecting. No one cares. But he, oh, but actually, this is a kicker. Over the last few years, they have been collecting experiences and making connections on issues that include veterans advocacy, mental health, online safety, and women's empowerment. Almost all of these subjects involve global agenda for 2030, and almost all of them involve uh, extra taxes um, and uh, they're pushing global policy which is foreign interference and high treason against the king mind you and this is a British Vanity Fair posting about this stuff allowing it accepting it acknowledging it this is it's just it's it's phenomenal this stuff is phenomenal um so Allah said to you, that was what happened with um, Australia when they were cha- trying to change our bill, which they did, that has now passed. By the way, um, a, a formal letter by a fellow Australian was sent to the king in November 2023 um, after I had posted about the high treason. And this is their response really well no response but this is their continued response that they continue to push global policy and commit foreign foreign interference and high treason um mental health almost safety there now they are beginning to call attention to just how important these those issues are to people around the world oh, what they're just pushing it and they have a the the platform has been allowed by the palace and palace, palace communications, and this is all a strategy. Call it the ne- call it the next step in their plan for world domination. What a joke! Or at the at the least, or at least their path to global policy change. Let me highlight that global policy change. Did I not tell you? Have I not told you since last year? <laughs> um, now they continue to say that the uh, you know the first black vice president, which could also be a great um, political identity for you know Nigerian nut. Um, this whole can you see how the whole narrative just interplays and it is interwoven in all of these global policy changes and this force for global agenda and you keep asking me why did they create these narratives in the first place why has has not been created you keep asking me why this is why it all falls into global agenda so anyway uh, this is the vice president of Colombia um explained the reason as to why she not was invited to Colombia which you'll have a good laugh about um, basically because of Netflix and it moved her, it moved her deeply. Um, and so she thought, yeah, that's justified. Shit. I'll just invite her over for a bit of a dance, um, and to speak Spanish. Why not? That that's what diplomacy is, right? You know, that's what diplomats work their careers and their lives for. Um, this is not staged at all. and not pushed by the palace, of course, you know. Um, diplomats actually, you know, I don't even know if they're intelligence, but they have to be, you know, very high up and have to have careers, lifelong careers in, in the government. What is this? Um, yeah, yeah, bullshit, 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 um, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Oh, and this is the last point. The main focus of the trip was connected to their recent R12 Foundation to push to raise awareness about the harms that children might encounter online. So they're using, so also another narrative is R12. R12 is a shell organization, um, completely corrupt, and they use this shell organization to push global agenda. That's all they do. And so they these these 
Two shills are paid employees of the crown, the larger crown, above the monarchy, and the monarchy helps push these, these agendas. And that's about it, I think, other than more bullshit. Um, you can see the link that I'll, I will link this article to, um, to the comments and you can have a look yourself. Thanks so much.